these look healthy, right? <laughs> this is a nice, beautiful uh, squash bed. Okay. Um, this one looks, you know, it just it stunning. You have to go look at this one, how tiny it is, and it's flowering. Right? That just means the plant's stressed. Hi, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com, and today I'm going to talk about the importance of a good soil using some examples of the same plant growing in the same conditions under good and, and bad soil. Okay, so basically, I'm showing you some success and some failure with the same plant where everything's been the same. The only difference between two growing conditions is the soil quality. Okay, so the first is uh, this bed here. So, what I'm going to be showing you is different examples of squash and relative productivity. So these, as you might guess, are good ones, right? So this is uh, oh, a variety of squash. Um, I think it's called Sweet Mama. That's the variety. And they're growing really well. Good size, about two, three feet high on average. The leaves are, um, the widest of them are almost a foot wide, anywhere from six inches to a foot wide, the leaves. And some nice big uh, flowers forming now. This bed, using the existing soil, this, this built bed was built using the existing soil and horse manure. Uh, I don't know, maybe three, four years ago. Uh, that's really and all that's been all that's been done to maintain it since then is just um, keeping it mulched all the time. But initially, it was the existing soil, which is pretty much clay and rock, and horse manure. Okay. Now, you look right next to it. This bed here. This is where uh, growing uh, garlic this year. And uh, when I had to thin these out, I tucked a couple of them in here because the garlic was almost done. And you know, once the garlic is uh, is finished, you basically it's a, a garlic bed's a good place to put uh, spare squash plants because squash needs the room, and the garlic it's basically time to pull this garlic. It's pretty much done. Uh, so look, look at the size of them. Look how small they are. Look, use my hand. Okay, I got my hand about an inch from there. Look at my hand as a comparison, right? And uh, the leaves range from uh, five inches in diameter to two inches in diameter, right? So, and these garlic, of all the garlic I planted in my garden, these are the poorest performing. Okay, now last year I planted uh, beans here, a nitrogen fixing plant, hoping that would, uh, you know, help the soil along. And then I planted garlic this year to see how well, this, this soil is still not that good. I'm going to show you some other examples of same plant moved to different locations and different results. Okay, but uh, so I, I basically this fall I'm gonna put some manure in here because <laughs> this bed needs it. Um, and you know this bed was built using the same approach, and I didn't use any manure, but for some reason the soil here is just that much better than the soil over here. I mean, look at these cabbage; they look great, right? So I don't know why, <laughs> but this bed has never been that productive, and this bed has. <laughs> so maybe it's just the different mulches I've chose to have on here. Perhaps uh, in previous years I used seaweed, which I find to be a really good soil booster. Um, but uh, I don't know, I, I really can't tell you other than to say that the soil is better here. <laughs> okay. Um, but in terms of conditions, this gets the same amount of sun as this. It gets the same amount of water. I don't water my garden. It just rains and, and you know, uh, everything's mulched. This bed's been perpetually mulched from day one. This bed's been perpetually mulched from day one. But the underlying soil, the existing soil on this bed is just not uh, not good soil. <laughs> it's just that simple. Now, here's a bed with uh, butternut squash. And this uh, this particular variety, the, the, the leaves look small. They're about six inches, you know, in uh, width, six to seven inches of width. So they're... It's not. A, it's, it's supposed to be a small, compact plant. That's what the seed package said. It's supposed to be a productive, small, compact plant. Is what it said. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, the, these look healthy, right? <laughs> this is a nice, beautiful uh, squash bed. Okay. Um, maybe a um, month and a half ago, I plucked a couple of these up when I was thinning them out, and I moved them to another part of the garden. Let's see how those ones are doing. So here we are, I'm, uh, the garden's down there, I'm up here, this is a terrace garden that I built. This is south facing, this should be an excellent garden bed. It gets just as much rain as any any other, you know, bed I have. 
but it's a south facing slope so it gets all the sun a plant could want and uh, here's the butternut squash that I put here and look at them they're tiny right and they, they were moved months ago I mean when you move a plant it could be set back a little bit but you know it's been months it shouldn't have been set back this much right it should have you know it, it might be a week or two behind the other one this one looks you know <laughs> it, it just it, it's stunted and hasn't grown look at this one how tiny it is and it's flowering right that just means the plant's stressed it's not getting what it needs um, these beds have been mulched from day one uh, you know there's plenty of worms in there doing their thing it's you know it's there's not not a no problem with moisture the soil's nice and moist um, there's worms in there right uh, it takes a heck of a long time to take a poor soil and improve it using a mulch uh, for those of you that are you know uh, fans of the back to Eden approach or whatever uh, it might might take years for a soil to improve it's a great way to maintain uh, a good soil but uh, it's improving a soil that way takes a long time this is evidence of that here just another example of what great soil can do this is a uh, Georgia candy roaster squash they're huge here's my hand right they're huge <laughs> um, they're growing right next to the terrace garden that terrace garden I just showed you with the lousy results the difference between this garden and the terrace garden <laughs> is uh, in fact these are more challenged in their growing because they're surrounded by trees here right like these are in the shade almost all the time you're in the shade uh, but the soil here is really good horse manure right? <laughs> these these beds here were built using horse manure I haven't added horse manure for I don't know probably three years but uh, yeah definitely uh, you know everything you I plant here grows really well right so the horse manure definitely making a big difference so there you have it it's all about the soil you get good soil you get good results you get poor soil you get poor results you can work with your existing soil but it may need amending I have found the cheapest easiest way to amend uh, a poor soil is to uh, add you know maybe three four inches of horse manure to the whole bed I'm sure there's weeds in a horse manure but if you know you're basically adding so much organic matter so quickly I mean I mean you can use compost too right but if you don't have any where do you get it right and uh, and when I say horse manure I don't mean go to the garden center and buy a bag of it uh, go to a horse stable and they'll have a big pile of poop somewhere and uh, hopefully they got some aged stuff use that if they don't have aged stuff take their fresh stuff and stick it in a pile somewhere and use it next year <laughs> right? this is a good time of year to do that because you know we're we're you know we're in, almost into August now and you know whatever's wrong with your garden at this point in the season you're probably not gonna be able to fix it if you live where I am there's only a, a month or so of growing left right um, so it's time to get planning for next year uh, get some fresh manure horse manure. fresh horse manure is always easy to source you can get it for nothing usually just stick it in a big pile use it next year right uh, let it cook um, other than that you know I guess you'd have to you know if you don't have access to that you're gonna have to you know take your chances but the reason I say don't buy a bag of stuff in a garden center is because you never know what you're getting <laughs> it'll say horse manure and there there might be horse manure in it but there might also be sand and whatever else they added to it to uh, make it profitable to sell right so you just you just do not know what you're getting when you're doing that but you know generally speaking you know good soil it's got a certain percentage of organic matter in it that's what makes it productive it's better at hanging on to water and it's just that organic matter is constantly breaking down and by virtue of that your plants are getting what they need to grow really well so i hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe check out my podcast maritimegardening.com and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching